as the seventh edition of the community of Latin American and Caribbean state summits came to a close. Its 33 member countries signed the Buenos Aires Declaration, pledging that to deepen integration, climate actions, democratic institutions, and uh, multilateralism. On Wednesday in Peru, Congresswoman Nieves Limachi filed a motion of vacancy against the President of the Republic, Vina Boluarte, with the support of left-wing parties. European Union interior ministers are the meeting on Thursday in Estocolm to discuss ways to speed up the return of irregular immigration, immigrant to their countries of origin. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. The Seven Select Summit has a gradient head of state and officials from Latin American and Caribbean countries. The final document signed by the 33 participants' countries has 111 points and 28 pages, highlighting the need for economic recovery after the pandemic and the need to work on poverty reduction. Our correspondent, Juan Carlos Bertolota, reports from Buenos Aires. In Buenos Aires, where Argentina concluded its temporary presidency, the 33 member states were present. We must definitely respect each other in our diversity because we have a common denominator that binds us together, which is to make our people wealthy people, people who are growing. I believe that we cannot continue to look at what is happening in Haiti and do nothing. And I personally would like to call on you to take action. At the opening of the summit, there was a round of applause for Brazil and its president for rejoining the Bloc of Nations. With the regrettable exception of the last few years, when my predecessor took the unexplicable decision to withdraw Brazil from SELAC, we have worked with determination and a sense of duty towards regional integration and the consolidation of a peaceful region, based on relations of dialogue and cooperation through successive Brazilian governments since the return of democracy. The president of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela took part in the summit speeches via a recorded message in the face of actions by the local right wing to prevent his travel to Buenos Aires. I would have loved to be there in person, on the spot, as we always have, as we always will be. However, for reasons beyond my control, the constant conspiracy, the constant harassment, the constant intimidation, the calculated ambush, I have decided, in my opinion, the most correct and just thing to do, not to succumb to the provocative attempt to spoil this moment. For his part, the president of Cuba, Díaz Canel, stressed the importance of CELAC. We are united and convinced by the vital unity of Latin America and the Caribbean in this diverse and inclusive mechanism, based on a deep vocation for independence nearly 200 years after the adoption of the Monroe Doctrine. The United States persists in its efforts to divide us, marginalize us, and subordinate us to its interests. Another exclusive topic of meeting was the socio-political situation in Peru, where the Colombian president also spoke. My question is, why is there is no court sentence for the popular elected president in prison when there is no court sentence and he has lost his political rights, he and his electorate? This is an open breach of the human rights system in the Americas. The Argentinian chancellor referred to the achievements of his presidency after handing over the temporary presidency of CELAC.
I only have to say that the necessary consensus has been reached on the 11 thematic statements and of course we have moved forward on the sub-regional rotation as promised by Argentina. With the aim of making the SELAC space more democratic and promoting the participation of all regions and sub-regions. For Argentina, the achievements of its term as SELAC president pro tempore during this last period were crowned in a sense by the handover of the chairmanship for the first time to a country of the community of Caribbean states that is, to the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In a way, this is the crowning of a path of dialogue and union in Latin Juan Carlos Bartolota, Telesur, Buenos Aires. The President of Cuba, Miguel Díaz Canel, described the meeting held on Wednesday with his Argentine counterpart, Alberto Fernández, a day after the seventh election as an Andrean one. This canal remarked that he congratulated Fernandez for the role played and the progress made at the head of Salaga as he pro-tempered the head during 2022. The Cuban president ratifies his willingness to defend the bound of a brotherhood and bilateral links in areas of common interest. He then thanked Fernandez for Argentina's expression of solidarity and his constant demands for end of the U.S. blockade. On his part, the Cuban Minister of Foreign Affairs, Bruno Rodriguez, affirmed through Twitter that the meeting was uh, fruitful and warm. Cuba's President Miguel Díaz Canel arrived in Venezuela on Wednesday to hold a working meeting with his Venezuelan counterpart, Nicolás Maduro Moros. The Cuban head of state visited a Latin American nation on his way back home after attending the 7th Select Summit held in Buenos Aires, Argentina. He was received at the Mekete International Airport by Venezuela's President Nicolás Maduro. The meeting between both heads of state focused on strategies to strengthen the relations between the two countries as well as face and resist the sanctions imposed by the U.S. government on both Caribbean nations. A multi-party commission of Ecuador's parliament has launched an investigation into corruption scandals within the government of President Guillermo Lasso. According to this official announcement, the seven legislators chosen to form the group will meet with the first time at this Thursday and will have two of the 30 days to sub submit a report to the parliament. They will review the audience and documents uh, taken by the local media, digital media La Posta, which points uh, to the existence of an alleged corruption network in public companies that will involve former president official, former government official, Ms. Barlon, among others, such as Danilo Carrera, brother-in-law of President Guillermo Lasso. Well, they got very first right now, but remember, you can all follow us on our TikTok account as well as in English, and we should be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and more. Stay tuned for more news. Welcome back to From the South. On Wednesday, Congress, uh, Congresswoman Nieves uh, Limachi from the uh, Perú Democrático filed a motion of vacancy against the President of the Republic, Dina Boluarte, with the support of left wing parties. The document uh, has the uh, support of uh, more than 20 congressmen. The motion is uh, based on the injuries and deaths that, that have uh, been reported due to the protests in several regions in the country which demand resignation of the head of state, the release of former President Pedro Castillo, and a constituent assembly. In the initiative, the legislators recall that during the first protest in December, there were 27 deaths due to the actions of agents of the Peruvian National Police. 
This sense uh, repeated itself on January the 4th, uh, the data on which the demonstrations resume. The people of Peru continues to take to the streets all over the nation despite the brutal repression unleashed by the government of Dina Boluarte. Let's take a closer look at the reasons behind the outgoing protests. The ousting of President Pedro Castillo on December 7th, Peruvians have taken to the streets nationwide to reject the government of Dina Boluarte and demand a political solution to the crisis unleashed. Boluarte's regime has met the request with brutal repression at the hands of police and military forces who have murdered over 60 citizens and left hundreds of injured and detained. Peruvian sociologist and political leader Lucia Alvites explains the extreme situation the people of Peru are currently facing. Since Mrs. Dina Boluarte assumed the presidency through a parliamentary cup carried out in complicity with the Peruvian ultra-right wing, sectors that from day one of Pedro Castillo's presidency tried to break the will of the people, in practice we are experiencing a dictatorial government. There is a systematic violation of human rights. At present, there are more than 60 Peruvian murders most of them by gunshot wounds. We have among them a minor who has died with a bullet in his head. While the administration insists on blaming the demonstrators for the social crisis, it is important to understand the needs and demands of the Peruvian people, for which they continue to risk their lives in the streets. This situation is a response to a political demand made by the population. Mrs. Boluarte is protagonizing a military response. She is repressing the Peruvian people instead of giving a political solution to the demands of the people. What is being demanded is the resignation of Mrs. Boluarte because a person who is responsible for more than 60 dead compatriots due to the repression of the state cannot stay in office one more day. In the same way, the people have also raised their voices asking for the closure of the current Congress. We are also asking for a change in the president officers of the Congress. Why? Because in the midst of this political crisis, if Mrs. Dina resigns, the president of the Congress will be the one to govern. And today, the president of the Congress is William Zapata, who is a protagonist, a representative of the far right sectors in the parliament. That is why what the citizens are demanding is a change in the Congress president's officials, so that whoever becomes president of the Republic can sustain a transitional government in order to call for new elections in the shortest time possible. Finally, another relevant claim the demonstrators are expressing with their presence in the streets is the possibility of a new constitution that replaces the one designed by Fujimori's Constituent Congress in 1993. And here comes the third demand, which is a consensus within the protest throughout the national territory, which is that at the time of the new elections, the people should be asked in a referendum whether or not they want a new constitution. It must be said that where these demonstrations are born, those who have been leading this demand that has to do with democratizing Peru and being able to get out of the crisis they have been going throughout for several years and that today is in most critical episode are the brothers from the south. Regions like Puno, regions like Cusco, like Ayacucho, like Apurimac who have risen up and with them the rest of the country has also risen up. We need to join forces both within the Peruvian society but also calling on the international community to recover democracy and to find a political and popular solution where the Peruvian people have the leading role, the voice. It is time to give power back to the people. This is the political outlook of a critical situation in the Andean country by political leader and sociologist Lucia Alvites for Telesur. On Wednesday, two people were killed and several other wounded in a knife attack on a regional train in the northern Germany. According to a spokesman for the Federal Police Force, there is happening a court on a train uh, travel between the cities of uh, Hunger and Kiel. The suspect was taken into custody at the railway station in the town of uh, Birkenstein. 
Gener Regional Interior Minister Sabine Sutherlin Wack said she was uh, shocked by the attack and that her thought were the, with, her, with the families and loved ones with, of the victims. Germany's national rail company said uh, some trains on the line between Bergens and Kiel have been cancelled uh, to allow police to conduct uh, their investigation. European Union Interior Ministers are meeting on Thursday in Stockholm to discuss why, uh, ways to speed up the return of irregular immigrants to their countries of origins, including restrictions licenses to nationals of corporate, cooperative countries. According to the data mentioned by the European Commission in 2021, it was dedicated on European countries to return 340 1,500 people to their countries of origin, but only 21% of those cases were effectively implemented. The European Union adopted in 2020 a mechanism by, by which the issuance of visas from certain countries is directly related to the cooperation of those countries in covering their citizens and not admitted to the European bloc. Europe recorded in 2022 a clear is in irregular immigration. Frontex at the European Border Agency recorded 330,000 illegal entries at the European Union borders, the highest figure since 2016. At least one person was killed and several injured in Spain after a man handling a machete attack at two churches in Algeciras. Authorities report that the disease is the sixth time of the church of La Palma, the main church in the town, and one of the injuries is the priest of the San Isidro Chapel who was attacked at minutes before. The official said that the distance between both churches is only 350 meters. The National Police arrested a perpetrator who is a man of about three years of North African origin. Reasons for the attacks are still unknown. Oh, we have more news coming up after this financial break, so don't go away. Welcome back. The British Antarctic Survey announced that an iceberg almost the size of Greater London broke off from Antarctica. The Research Institute reported that it's a split of a cord just over 20 kilometers from the British Haley Research Station. That 1,270 square kilometers, 150 meters thick chunk of frozen water separated from the Brenda ice shelf on Friday and gave way to complete the last January the 22nd. The British Antarctic Survey, which has been operating in a reduced role since 2017 because of the concern on iceberg cool immediately break off, captured the footage of a large crowd on Antarctica's brown ice shelf early in the month. The Institute's director, Dame Jane, said that the scientific teams uh, foresee that this will happen due to warming of the waters. In South Africa, the heat wave sweeping across the country has left at least eight people dead in the last few days. According to the preliminary report, most of the diseases were farm workers from the northern Cane province, a semi-arid region bordering Namibia and Botswana. On the other hand, meteorological services detailed that the nation has suffered extreme high temperatures due to the warmer mass coming from neighboring continents with temperatures raking reaching 40 degrees Celsius. Likewise, the European Union Climate Monitoring Service indicate that the last 80 years were the hottest on record in the world. Yeah. 
The amount of resources stolen by the United States from Syria in recent years exceeded at $100 billion. This was announced by the Basam Sabah, the Syrian ambassador to the United Nations on Wednesday. During a session of the Security Council, the Syrian diplomat criticized such important species as the United Nations allowed themselves to reproduce lies about sovereign nations and remain silent about the crimes committed by Washington. The ambassador announced that it has not been enough to plunder millions of dollars by stealing gas with an oil, but it have also imposed sanctions that several affected key areas such as health and food. At least eight people are dead and 58 others are missing in the Sumbregra of the coast of the Libyan town of Garabuli. The Red Cross reported that a rope bomb boat was carrying about 150 migrants, of whom 84 survived and were taken to medical centers. The humanitarian organizations have pointed out that all the diseases were men. The United Nations International Organization for Migration indicated that since the beginning of 2023, more than 1,100 migrants from Africa and the Middle East were intercepted and returned to Libya. Malawi's health ministry confirms that, that a cholera outbreak has killed more than 1,000 people as the country runs out of vaccines. The southern African nation has uh, been battling its worst cholera outbreak on record, with more than 30,600 people infected since the first case were reported last year. In November, the country received almost 3 million doses of oral cholera vaccine from the United Nations to step up its immunization campaign, but case numbers continue to rise. According to the World Health Organization, the death toll reached 1,002. On January the 23rd, exceeding the, the, the previous record largest outbreaks, which killed uh, 968 people between 2001 and 2002. Cholera, which causes diarrhea and vomiting, is contracted from a bacterium that is generally transmitted through contaminated food or water. And we have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telestudyenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. To so, English, I'm from the South, I'm Ana Marrero, and thank you for watching.